Hi everyone. So this skill is going to go over a calf change and blood work from a pick, a peripherally inserted central catheter. Nice thing about the picks is that there is a valve way deep, deep at the end of the catheter to make sure that blood doesn't flow back and air doesn't go in when we take our caps off. So this makes it, things a lot easier because we don't need heparin and you can see we also don't have any claps to deal with. So nice and easy. So first I want to make sure, of course, do my hand hygiene. And if I'm sending blood work, I want to make sure I have a requisition that is stamped appropriately and also filled out appropriately. Um, and I want to make sure that the stamp or the addressograph matches my patient's name band and also one other identifier. As well, I want to make sure that my label also matches my requisition and also matches my patient's name band as well. We want to make sure we're sending the right blood on the right patient. Okay. So after I've done my hand hygiene, of course I'm going to put on a pair of gloves and they're non-sterile, just regular gloves. Okay. Of course I would introduce myself uh, and tell my patient what I'm going to be doing. Okay. So for the pick, if we had an infusion running through one line, we would make sure that we stop the infusion and wait approximately one minute, just so that we're not drawing back on our line and accidentally contaminating our blood work with that infusion that's running through. I don't have any infusions running through right now, so I can pick whichever lumen, and it doesn't really matter which lumen you take blood work from. Okay. Uh, sometimes picks can be a little bit finicky um, in that because they're so long and they're a smaller uh, diameter, it is hard to get blood return, and sometimes they are hard to flush as well. I'm going to pick the red lumen, so I'm going to come to this port and I'm going to clean it 30 seconds, and I'm going to let it dry for 15. Because there's no heparin inside this line, I am safe to come and just attach a flush. Because all I'm doing is flushing normal saline that was previously instilled or locked. Oh, I'm just gonna flush that through and that flush is really nice. So 10 cc's is an adequate flush. However, if you're finding that your line is sluggish, you can always flush with a little bit more. Now what's really handy too is I can aspirate my discard right into the same syringe. So I'm going to pull back. So what I'm pulling back is now just that normal saline that was sitting in the line and you can see some of my patient's blood. So minimum 6 cc's is what I'm going to pull back. However, remember picks are a little bit long so we can always draw a little bit extra to make sure that our sample is not contaminated. So you could even draw up to about 8 or 10 cc's. So once I've taken my discard, I'm going to throw that into uh, the appropriate container, so like a sharps container. And since there's no clamps, there's nothing to clamp. I can just take that right off. So now if I'm taking lab work, there's two options. I can use a syringe method or I can use a vacutainer. So if I'm using a vacutainer, I use the blue top one. It would come in a package. This would be sterile at the top. I can attach it right to my catheter, the interlink um, cap. And I would take my blood tube, whichever blood tube uh, for whatever blood work I need, and I can attach it right into the line. However, picks can be a little bit finicky because they're so long um, that sometimes they won't give you uh, the blood that you need. Okay, so if this happens to you in the lab, you can just verbalize what would happen. Okay, you can see my container is not filling up. My patient, this patient, has no blood pressure. In a real patient, it should fill up for you, okay? Because there's a pressure inside these tubes that will pull. Vacutainers though, like I was saying, for picks can be a little bit finicky. So if that's not gonna work, or if you just prefer to use a syringe method, that is completely fine too. So we would take a 10 cc syringe. You could use a smaller syringe if you want to. It depends how much blood work you're taking. So if you were only taking, say, one tube, this tube needs four mLs, so I could use a five mL syringe. If I'm taking two tubes, say these sizes, I would probably need about 10 cc's. Okay, so that's why maybe I'll need a 10 cc syringe. Now, if I haven't dropped my lumen at all or my cap, I can just attach my syringe right to that, the end. If I put it down for any reason, make sure you re-swab 30 seconds, dry for 15. Okay, so we're gonna attach that syringe onto there. Let's see if we'll get any blood return. And yes, we do get some blood return. Okay. And picks can be a little bit tricky, it takes a little while to, to get the blood flowing. Okay. So I'm going to say, because this is taking me a while, that I'm only going to be sending one tube off. So I need about four mLs. 
And what I'm pulling now is straight patient blood. So this is ideal blood for sampling. Now, if I'm using the syringe method, I'm gonna to need to transfer that. So I would take one of these pink cap vac vacutainers, attach it to the end, okay? and then I would attach my blood tube onto there. So you can see how that fills a little bit better. Okay? And it would keep filling until it's got the amount that it needs. Okay? Often there's lines on the tubes as well, which will tell you where to stop. Okay. I would also check my inversion chart to make sure I invert this however many times I need. Okay, And label it appropriately. Now my line, I can't just leave it like this because it's got blood sitting in there. Remember blood is really sticky, so we want to get rid of that blood. We don't want it to clot up our lumen. Okay, So we have our syringes, normal saline filled, and we're going to use some um, uh, pressure, <clears throat> turbulent uh, blood flow, turbulent flow to try to clean that lumen. So one cc, push pause. We're going to do that again because remember blood is sticky. We're going to try to get all that blood out. Always after a blood draw, it's 20 cc's. Again, push pause, push pause, nice turbulent flow. And that's all we need. Where our line is normal saline locked. Now for a cap change on a pick, really easy as well. We have no heparin to draw out. We have no clamps. So very easy. We just need our normal saline syringe. We need an interlink cap. We're going to banana peel that cap back. Don't touch the end. We want that to maintain sterility. Okay, we're going to attach that onto there. And we're going to prime and get the bubbles out. And then we can tuck that back in, make sure it's sterile, take it to our patient's bedside. Okay. So normally we change all caps at the same time. So we would, we would change both, but in the lab we can just change one for practice. So we're going to clean this cap with an alcohol swab, but we're going to clean the connection. Just because there might be uh, blood or medications crusted, uh, where the cap meets the lumen. So we're going to swab there. All right, so once it's nice and clean, we're going to unscrew that cap. Okay. If we notice that the lumen here looks a little bit contaminated or there's blood or medication or something, we can definitely swab that as well. Okay. And we don't have to worry about any claps because the valves inside are, are closed. So nothing's going in, nothing's come back. We've got our cap ready to go. We're just going to take off that blue end. And we're going to attach that. Okay. And then we're going to flush. And we can use our push pause, push pause, one ml each time, just to create some turbulent flow, just to make sure that lumen is nice and clear. And that locks it. We only need 10 cc's because we didn't draw any blood. So it was just a normal saline lock flush with our cap change.